Lesson 4.2, page 182 of your book, Writing Functions in Point-Slope Form. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to write an equation of a line given its slope and a point on the line. You're going to learn how to write an equation of a line given two points on the line. And you'll learn how to use a linear equation to solve a real-life problem. Now, Instead of reading this, I read this as I'm preparing to make the video, and this is going to sound really confusing. So instead of reading it, let me just tell you what they're trying to tell you here. All this is saying is point slope form is created from the slope formula. So when you read all this stuff, it's saying here's the slope formula. You can see it right here. And if you rewrite the slope formula, you will get what you see here. Now if you look at these two statements, they have all the same stuff in them. All they've done is they've taken the x sub 2 minus x sub 1, moved it next to m, and reversed the statement around. So the point slope form is created from the slope formula. That's what this is trying to tell you. Let me uh, erase out what I just wrote so we have space to see this. Okay, I want you to think for a minute. When you hear slope intercept form, some of us I don't think have picked up on this. We call it slope intercept form because by looking at the equation, m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. These two numbers will tell you the slope and y-intercept of your graph. So when you read the the words point slope form, that's telling you something. It's telling you that these two numbers in orange are a point on the line. And that the slope is the number m in front of what you see in parentheses here. So when you look at this equation, by looking at these numbers, you ought to be able to tell a point on your line and by looking at m, you ought to be able to tell the slope of the line. And that's what they're saying to you right here in this wording. The line is passing through the point in this equation, and the slope of the line is in the equation. Let's talk about how you use slope and a point to write an equation then in point-slope form. And this is super easy. Write an equation in point-slope form of the line that passes through the point negative 8, 3 and has a slope of a quarter. So you'll notice here's the equation y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Okay? Now, all you have to do is instead of m, write in the slope. I color-coded this. The slope is a quarter. So you see how m became a quarter. The point is x, negative 8, y, 3. So where you see x sub 1, you put a negative 8 in there. And where you see y sub 1, you put a 3 in there. Now be careful here. You see how the, again, this happened with our transformations, these negatives. Everything is going to be backwards of what it seems. So you notice how it says x minus negative 8. Well, what is x minus negative 8? I hope you're saying, well, that's x plus 8. So here's the final equation. Now, you notice the point had a negative 8 in it, but the equation says positive 8, and the point had a 3, and this says minus 3. So everything is going to be backwards again of what you expect when you see point slope form because the original form has subtractions in it. And you can see that here. The point is 3, negative 8, but the equation says minus 3 plus 8. That's something to be careful about. Let's have you try. I want you to take this information for numbers 1 and 2. It only should take you a few seconds. Take the point and the slope, and I would like you to write an equation in point-slope form. Do, pause the video and do that. Okay, so hopefully you tried that. And so for the first one, my point is 3, negative 1, and my slope is negative 2. So my slope goes here, in for m, and my point, x is 3, that goes here, and y is negative 1, and that goes here. Now remember, since it's subtracting, I have an x minus 3, 
and then y minus negative 1 turns into y plus 1. You notice how these are backward from what the point is. The point says 3, negative 1, but the equation says negative 3 and positive 1 because of these subtractions again. Over here, slope's negative 2 thirds. I plug that in for m, and I plugged in 4 for x sub 1 and 0 for y sub 1. Either of these equations would be right. You could put y minus 0 equals negative 2 thirds, parentheses x minus 4. y minus 0 is just y, so if you just simplified it to here, that'd be fine too. Now, if you are given two points and they want you to write an equation, it's just as easy. There's just one more step of work. The first thing you'd have to do is take your two points and find the slope. Now, remember, to find slope, you've got to use the slope formula, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And then once you have your slope, you take one of the points, and that's a key thing, take one of those two points, and put them in the equation. Now we can't forget when we do slope formula, it's rise over run. On our last test, I had people doing run on top and rise on the bottom. If you're doing that, you are not going to get the, the slopes right. And if your slope's wrong, your equation's going to be wrong. So there's the slope formula again. Do you notice they took these points? Let me highlight them. The y's are here. Can you see how those numbers ended on top? And the x's are here, and can you see how those ended on the bottom? The y's go on top, the x's go on the bottom. It has to be rise over run to get these calculated right. So you notice they worked this out, and they figured out your slope was negative 2. So they put a negative 2 in for slope, and now they took a point. They took and when you take a point, I pick whatever one seems easiest. Well, I got a choice. It's either 1, 2, or 3, negative 2. I'd say 1, 2 is easiest. Go ahead, put 1 in here, and take 2 and put it in there. And then, now, there's point slope form. So we have a correct equation in point slope form, but I want you to notice the directions. The directions asked us to write an equation in slope intercept form. That's a super easy fix. To change point slope form into slope intercept form, you just got to just simplify it. So do you notice they're distributing? So now we have y minus 2 on the left, and we have negative 2x plus 2 on the right. And then you have one more quick step. I got to get y by itself, so add 2 to each side. And if you add 2 to each side, these cancel. y would equal negative 2x plus 4, and there's your slope intercept form equation. Easy to fix that. Easy to change point slope form into slope intercept form. Here's the nice thing about point slope form. It's the easiest form to write an equation. Because all you got to do is plug in a slope and plug in a point and you got it. Okay? Now, what about writing equations that um, we have to write an equation when we have our information in function notation? So again, you got to read the language. This is simply telling you, f of 4 equals negative 2 is simply telling you, you have the point x4, y negative 2. If you don't understand the symbolism, you are going to be sunk. You've got to know the symbolism, that language function notation. Again, on the last test, some of us did not know function notation, and then we couldn't answer questions because we didn't understand what that was saying. Then, over here, this is saying f of 8 equals 4, which means x is 8, y is 4. Okay, now this is the exact same problem that we, the exact same kind of problem we just did. There's two points, and we have to write an equation for the line passing through these two points. So the first step would be to follow these same instructions. Find the slope first. Then use the slope and one of the points to write an equation in point slope form. Okay, so let's find the slope. The y's go on top. You notice 4 and negative 2 are the y's. I just circled them here. The x's, I'll do this in blue, go on the bottom. Here are my x's. i got to subtract my x's on the bottom. And this worked out to 6 over 4, which is 1.5. So 1.5 is the slope. We plug that in. It doesn't matter what point you pick. Um, I think the book picked 8, 4 because there was no negatives in 8, 4. So 
X is 8, plug that in here, Y is 4, plug that in there for the one point we need. And now, that would be a correct equation in point slope form, but the problem is asking for slope intercept form, so you quickly distribute which would give you y minus 4 equals 1.5x minus 12. And then if you quickly add 4 to each side, you'll see that you get y equals 1.5x minus 8. They want function notation, so replace y with f of x. So f of x would equal 1.5x minus 8. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and you try these three. And I'm back, and just to uh, speed up the video, I'm not going to go through each of these, but you can see I boxed my answer in slope-intercept form for numbers 3, 4, and 5. If you're not following this, when you come to class tomorrow, before we take an audit, just say, I had questions on this, and we can go through this before we take the audit, if you're not sure on what I'm doing to get from the points to the equation in slope-intercept form. You can see right here in each statement, I wrote an equation in point-slope form first. And to wrap things up, solving real-life problems. Let's model with mathematics. The student council is ordering customized foam hands to promote school spirit. The table shows the cost of ordering different um, numbers of foam hands. So here's the first question. Can the situation be modeled by a linear equation? Explain. Well, you've already learned how to determine if a table's linear. Is there a constant rate of change? In other words, is there a consistent adding or subtracting pattern? Let's check. Looks like I'm going up 2 each time for x, and I'm going up 12 each time for y. So this would definitely have a consistent rate of change, and let's find it. Rise over run is how you find slope. Can you see, now this is something we screwed up on the last test also. These are the y's. And these are the x's. I have to put the 12 on top. 12 is y and the 2 on the bottom. That's x. The slope is 6. So, Next, if possible, write a linear model that represents the cost as a function of the number of phone hands. That should be easy now, because my linear model, I can use point slope form. So I already know my slope is 6, so let's go ahead and plug in 6 for m. All I need is a point. Let's pick the easiest point. Well, this has the smallest numbers, 4 and 34. Let's put a 4 in for x sub 1 and a 34 in for y sub 1. Let's write it in slope-intercept form to make it neat. So I'll distribute y minus 34 equals 6x minus 24. And if I add 34 to each side, I'm going to get y equals 6x plus 10. Now, my equation is written in form of y and x, which is fine, but I'm just going to change the variables now to match the book, and here's what they're doing. Instead of y, we'll use c for cost. And instead of x, since it's number of foam hands, we'll use n for number. So instead of y and x, they're just using c and n. And there's your equation. So in other words, the cost of the foam hands, it must be $6 per foam hand plus maybe a $10 setup fee or something like that. That's what this is telling me. Okay. I'm going to stop the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.